Howdy. So in this next series of screencasts, we're going to get into the real-time nature of our project, and that's going to be dealing a lot with WebSockets and Socket.io. So we start kind of our odyssey here at the Socket.io site, where there's a bunch of helpful information. So what are we trying to accomplish with using a real-time framework? One way of looking at it is that we're trying to handle events between multiple client browsers using the server as this kind of intermediary to let everyone know what's going on the second it happens. For example, when I have a button here and when I click on it, it's toggling this div's color. Let's look at the code. So I want some way of handling this button click so that when I click it, I can do something about that. And right now with jQuery, that's happening between the DOM and the browser. But I want to expand that so that when an event happens on the DOM, the server can broadcast that to any client who's subscribed or listening for that event. So how do WebSockets differ from HTTP? WebSockets are actually an extension of HTTP. Since the server can't send data unless a client has requested it, WebSockets allow for a server to send data unsolicited. As we're going to see in a second, WebSockets are an upgrade to the HTTP protocol, and once a client establishes a connection with the server, the server can send data to that client as directed. So how does Socket.io come in? For the purposes of this screencast, Socket.io does two things. First, it abstracts different real-time transport mechanisms, which is a mouthful, but it just means that those mechanisms like WebSockets or long polling are put into one call that then falls back to whatever mechanism is supported. So if WebSockets aren't supported, then it goes to long polling and on down the list. Second, Socket.io provides helpful methods to interact with WebSockets, which we're gonna look at right now. But the way I learn this stuff is just to kind of dive right into it, and that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's get into the terminal. And I'm gonna make a directory initial test. Get into that. And the first thing we're gonna need is to npm install Socket.io. So let's do that. Okay, let's take a look at some code. So these two files represent the bare bones example of a Socket server and a client. We're not using any framework, no sales, no express. So in addition to Socket.io, we're using the HTTP module as well as the file system or FS module. So first let's take a look at the server side piece. This first line is creating the HTTP server. And as an argument, it's got this handler function that we're gonna flesh out starting in line seven. Here's where Socket.io is upgrading HTTP and going to be listening through the HTTP server. And we're gonna be doing all that through port 3000. So all this function here is doing is saying that if a request comes in to the HTTP server, I wanna read a file, in this case, index.html, from the server and respond either with an error or responding with the contents of index.html, which is over here on the right. The fun part is starting in line 19. And this is where Socket.io is listening for a connection from a client. So if it gets a connection, it's gonna take that socket, that client, and it's gonna emit from that socket that initially connected with it and send it a new event called news along with this object, hello world. On the client side, when the index.html file is loaded in the browser, the page is gonna to try to connect with our server. It's also going to register or start listening for a news event. So when we launch the app.js file, it's gonna create an HTTP server. It's gonna extend and upgrade that with Socket.io. When a request is made to the server, it's going to deliver index.html. And finally, it's going to start listening for this event called connection. And if it gets it, it's going to send whatever socket requested that connection, this news event, which is going to contain the object hello world. And when the index.html file is loaded, it's going to initiate a connection with the socket server and start listening for this news event. Okay, let's see this in action. So I'm going to start the app with node app. Server started, we can go to the browser, and we can see here that the object hello world has been passed back, and we asked for that right here in console log.data. So we were listening for that news event that was passed from the server, delivered to us, and then presented on the console. So what is this socket? 
Well, first of all, each client is going to have its own ID. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to log the socket ID right here. So I'm going to restart the server. And let's go ahead and connect. And so here it is, our socket ID. There's a unique string for each client that's hitting the socket server. So now that we have the basics in place, creating a rudimentary chat application is straightforward. So on the server side, I'm just going to replace this object here with a string. So now when the client makes a connection, the server is going to send back welcome to the chat. And then on the client side, I'm going to add some CSS and a bit of markup. So using jQuery, we have a form here and I haven't changed the JavaScript yet. Let's take a look at that form. Go ahead and start the server. And so we have our input field in the form and we're still connecting to the server and we're getting the welcome to the chat message via the console log. Let's go ahead and get that message to show up in our chat div. And all I have to do is replace this console log with a bit of jQuery that's going to take that data and append it to our incoming chat window, which is this div right here. So let's refresh this page. And now our welcome message is in the chat. Enabling our ability to send messages to the server for broadcast out to all the clients is equally easy. So I'm going to add this jQuery in. And all this is going to do is take input from our outgoing chat field here and emit a new event called send message, which is just going to be the value of whatever I put in that input field. And then after the message is emitted, I'm going to clear out that field. So if we've, so if we've emitted a message on the client side, we need to come over to the server side and listen for that event. So now the server is listening for the send message event. And when it gets it, it's going to turn around and emit to all sockets an event called new message with the data that was originally sent. And you guessed it, we now need to listen for a new message on the client side. So when the server sends new message, we're going to append that to the incoming chat window div up here. Okay, let's see all this in action. Restart the server, refresh the browser, and now I'll put in my first message. Great, but we're just sending it to ourselves and that isn't very interesting. Let's go ahead and create another client. I'll move that over here to the right. This one on the left. So now my second message is showing up on both clients. And I could do a third message here and that's showing up on both clients. Great. The next concept I want to go over is rooms. As a convenience, Socket.io provides methods that allow you to manage socket IDs in groups called rooms. Now the sockets can join rooms and then emit messages only to the sockets that have joined the room. Let's see how to create a room, join it, and finally send a message to those in it. Okay, so first I'm going to create the markup that'll be our button to join the room. Next we'll have some jQuery that'll react when that button is clicked. And when the button is clicked, the socket will emit a subscribe event, which will send the data, which includes the name of our room. Then we'll go to the server side and listen for the subscribe event, and then join the subscribing socket to the room attribute of data, in this case, beta. All right, let's see what that looks like. So I'll start the server. And we can see our new page that has the join button. When I click on join room, we now have two rooms, the default room with our socket ID for this tab and a beta room with the same socket ID. I can duplicate this tab. So now we have another instance of which I'll join. And now both tabs with both sockets are subscribed to both the default room and the beta room. But how do we send a message to a particular room? Let's go back to the code. Okay, this is kind of a contrived example, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. So first, let's look at the markup. I've created another form, which essentially copies the chat that's being sent to all sockets and created this new form that's just going to the beta room. Next, we'll look at the jQuery and the emit. So, so we're taking the contents from our input field and emitting a new event to this send message to. And the data, once again, is just the value of whatever's typed in that input field. 
Then we go over to the server side, and on the server, we're listening for this send message to event, but there's a difference here. Instead of emitting to all sockets, we're gonna emit to those sockets that are in the beta room. Okay, let's see what this looks like. So I'll start the server. And now we have this separate chat field that's just going to the beta room. So I'm gonna go ahead and join this room, duplicate this tab, actually a couple of times. So tab one and tab two will have joined the room. And I'm gonna put secret here. And so tab two of course sees it, tab one sees it because it's in the room. Tab three has not joined the room, so it does not see it. So in this screencast, we've learned an overview of Socket.io and WebSockets, how to connect a client to a Socket server, how to send a message from the client to the server and have it broadcast to all clients, and finally, the concept of rooms, which allow us to only send messages to the Sockets that have subscribed to a particular room. Now that we have this basic understanding, we can move on to sales and see how it leverages Socket.io. Thanks for watching.